Hi, I'm Alex Palt, and I'm here at the Things Conference in Amsterdam, and we're talking about the Internet of Things, and right now I'm with Alex Raimondi from uh, Miro Micro. How's it going today, Alex? Hi, I'm fine. You? Well, it's such a nice thing to be back in front of people again and interacting and all of the personal aspects that come with all of this business. Yeah, that's true. I even meet people that I was talking on, on a remote video conferencing for three years, and today I'm meeting them first time in person. And sometimes it's even hard to recognize them because you, you only know the voice. And, you only uh, see the front of their face. Yeah. Like, you see them from the yeah, side. Yeah. <laughs> And you, you, you seem to know them for years, but um, and first time to see them face by face to face. Yeah. But the beautiful thing is, is that it's an ecosystem, and it's a growing ecosystem and a growing community. Yes, that's true. Because you've yes. been here, you've been here since the very beginning, haven't you? We have been on the very first one as well. Yes, and it's yeah, we enjoy it every time to come here to Amsterdam, and see the how it's growing, how it's developing, where it leads to. Well, what are your thoughts on how it's grown? I mean, having been here from the beginning. The first one was kind of was was very interesting to be. It was more centered to developers or like the 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 to the, the, the developers and the the, the 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 one that starting integrating um, the Laura money first first time. And now it's more getting business and about growing the ecosystem, of course. Applied technology as opposed to potential technology. And that's where we are now with Laura Man. It's a major technology that's in the market for quite a long time now. Yes, and it's using a band that was previously, you know, w once the TV band went over to us, yep. gave us all kind of opportunity to do something with it. Yeah, and now it's also expanding to, from kind of simple sensor applications, it's now growing into global use cases and... Um, edge computing. Edge computing. That's the, all, it's also something that's starting to happen and also deploying worldwide locations. Um, with different frequencies, also like 2.4 gigahertz is coming in some way. Um, it's LoRa, LoRa Van, all those technologies together um, will bring no, new use cases and also new potential, new features into what we can do with the technology. Well, you know, it's so interesting, Alex. And when you think about it, um, well, you just had a keynote on this very subject. Can you tell us a little bit about your keynote was? Keynote will be in an hour, but yes, we uh, I'm talking about logistics because we are working on different use cases on uh, how we can use LoRaWAN, LoRaWAN technology or in general LPWAN technology um, for uh, global logistics where we have different or other requirements than if we do local uh, center deployment in a, in a, like an office building or in a private home or it's even smart cities where we are Still large scale, but mostly uh, in a in a one region, one area where we can fix ourselves to the local allowed frequencies, such as Europe with 868 or US with the 915. But globally, there we have a different problem because th the devices and the goods are traveling across the globe, and where we have to cope with the different regulations, we have to um, work with different authorities. So that's where. We um, do all our logistic tracking with uh, based on uh, 2.4 gigahertz, and there are some aspects in bringing 2.4 gigahertz also to lower on alliance. It's not yet there, so there is no official standard for it. But TTI, TTI as well supports 2.4 gigahertz, so we have our gateway integrated with TTI, so we can work 2.4 gigahertz globally using TTI network. Well, you know the things industries. Um is a leader in the space, you know, and to participate with them and to expand in there is pretty critical, isn't it? It needs both of them. It needs the network, it needs the network server, but it also needs hardware, hardware supplier, because Internet of Things is nothing without the things. The internet itself, it's the, it's the enabler for it, but in the end you need the things and you need someone that can build devices in large scale for a good price and also integrate them with the final solution. It's always about the applied solution. You know, you can have all kinds. Well, you can have all kinds of. There are a lot of people promising things and saying this is going to do all of this, but you have to make it yes. do. PowerPoint is easy to do. You have to do it in hardware and you have to do it in large scale, and that's one of the key difference between large scale software deployment and large scale hardware de hardware deployment. Software once it's deployed or de developed, you can easily deploy it. You can check it with checksums that it's correctly deployed, but hardware is. Every de device is basically a unique device, so we have to make sure in, in the production that we do all the testing, that we do all the verification, so that the devices are going into the field with good quality, because 
it's not like software where you can do remote uh, software updates. It's hardware. If once it's broken in the field, you have to go there and replace it. And this is integrated with, if you go globally with logistics, you, have, you probably would have to go to the central of Africa to collect your devices back. And this can get quite expensive, well, even in small scale. Even in small scale. Well, then that's, that's the bottom line, right? I mean, you have to have the hardware. The hardware has to be deployed. And then the hardware, depending on where it's deployed, for, I'll give you a good example. Um, I grew up in New York City and I visit occasionally. And I was in New York City when they were deploying the remote sensors for the meter reading. And one, they mounted, one of the installers mounted the sensor directly under the dryer, the clothing dryer air exhaust. So that means that constant hot, moist air is going to blow on this sensor yeah. for perpetuity. And the designer didn't foresee that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what we do with testing. So we have to design the sensors for testing. But in the end, you, the people that also do the, the system, deploy the system into the field, they also have to inst uh, understand what they're actually doing. So that's, of course, labor work is always expensive, but sometimes you also have to invest in good workers because they need to understand and they need to be motivated. We also had use cases, for example, where we wanted to deploy rats, uh, rat traps in a, in a shopping center somewhere in the Middle East. Everything was perfectly working, but the guys that were deploying the, the rat traps, they were kind of underpaid um, workers. They just threw them out. And in the end, you knew that one, one trap caught a rat, but you didn't know where the trap is because they were supposed to localize them in the app while deploying, but they just didn't care. They just throw in the corner somewhere. And then in the end, you're, you're stuck at the same point just with more expensive rat traps. You had to go and find the trap that caught well, the rat. That's a poor deployment. The equipment was ready. Yeah, the equipment was ready, but the, the people that deployed weren't properly educated, they weren't trained, and most probably also underpaid. So, well, But then that's, the, that, that's another aspect of the reason why we need an ecosystem. It has to be a community. It has to be something that's established. Because if you're just grabbing random applications, random deployments, it's not the same. Yeah, that's, that's what we do with, for example, with our daughter company, Tesenzo, that is doing um, all the world, the, the deployment. It's about evaluating the use case, find out the problem. It's not about the software, it's not about the device. It's also about how you design the use case, how you do the deployment, because a use case can also die just on the deployment, because you cannot manage to deploy the devices at cost into the field. If that is too complicated, even the system, the hardware, the software, everything is working fine in your small scale test, POC pr probably. If you cannot deploy that in large scale, it will not work. It will not fly. So it's got to be scalable. You have to evaluate that in the beginning. Otherwise, you will have disappointed customers at large scale. That's no fun. No, it isn't. So thank you so much, Alex, for taking the time. It's a pleasure to talk with you pleasure's mine. And especially when it's something that this is important. You know, I mean, we're all trying to make the future as we go along. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, don't forget, we're going to have next Jay Clifford from Influx Data. And we're going to talk about uh, turning IoT data into business insights. So stay tuned. <laughs>